Hello, and welcome back to Stately Vaughn Manor. And today, we're going to be talking about Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. And then after that, really quickly, we're going to go over uh, some uh, books I'm going to read in the horror genre. So, Mexican Gothic. I read this in January. I was pretty impressed with it. Really like this book. So this is about, uh, main character is Naomi. And back in 1950s Mexico, Naomi, who is a socialite, uh, likes to go to the cocktail parties in Mexico City. She's called in by her dad, and her dad's real concerned because Naomi's cousin uh, has married this creepy English guy, and he hauled her out to this strange place called High Place uh, out in the Mexican countryside. And so he wants Naomi to go and check on her. He's pretty confident that she could do a good job because this Naomi, she's smart, she's tough, uh, and if anyone can get the job done, it's her. So she's not crazy about it, but she goes. She goes to creepy old High Place, and boy, is that place creepy. Creepy old place out there in the Mexican countryside. Big old house, battered, moldy smelling, and full of creepy, creepy, creepy people. Man, some of the people you meet in this house, I don't know. They're just, uh, something's wrong with a lot of these, these folks. Uh, so when I, first, when I first picked up this book, I was expecting uh, ghosts. Um, not ghosts. I'm just going to spoil that. Not ghosts. Um, so, something worse. There's something worse and, and even more ghastly going on uh, in this book, which of course, I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm not going to let you in on any of the plot. You got to learn about it firsthand, just like I did. Um, but it's the characters, really good job on the characters. Uh, main character, Naomi, she's awesome. You know, she's just super cool, tough lady and a great, a great hero for the story. Um, uh, the folks that you meet in High Place, uh, all, all different degrees of creepy. Uh, uh, one is not so bad, uh, but again, I'm not going to uh, uh, spoil that. A lot of the old gothic tropes you'll find in this, the kind of like doomed mysterious guy who lives in the, the gothic the gothic house and it, a lot of those tropes are in here but then she adds all this other stuff uh which are just like when you get to them you're just like man where'd that come from that's i didn't expect that a ton of stuff as you get further along into this book there's just a ton of stuff you just did not see coming i didn't anyway um i was just expecting something I was expecting something different. Let's let's just put it that way. Um, but I was I was pretty happy. This this starts off as like a, a moody, creepy, gothic story, and then just cranks up to a, a real horror, a ho real horror novel by the end of it. Um, I was happy with it, and I think you will be too if you give it a shot. So this is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. Um, pick it up; it's awesome. Uh, so now I'm going to talk about uh, some things that I'm going to read in the horror genre. There's just a ton of stuff I want to check out. The other day when I was doing that, uh, or right before I did that uh, Richard Matheson uh, video that I did, I picked up this, uh, Dance, Dance Macabre by Stephen King. And um, there, was this, there was a little bit in here that I saw... I read, I read this sentence. Now, he's, he's talking about the Shrinking Man novel. He's talking about how great it was and how he envies people who read it for the first time. And I came across this. Uh, it is certainly one of the select handful that I have given to people, envying them the experience of the first reading. Others would include Bloch's The Scarf, Tolkien's The Hobbit, Berton and Berton Rocher's Feral. Now, of course, I've, I've heard of Robert Bloch's The Scarf. I've, you know, talked about The Hobbit. I've read that a dozen times. But I'm like, Berton Rocher's Feral. Berton Rocher's Feral. I've never even heard of that. 
And he's putting it up there with these other books. He's, he says he envies you the first experience of reading it. Man, I got to get a hold of that, right? So, of course, I order it. And uh, in the mail, I get this. Guys, I think this is a book about killer kitty cats. I'm pretty sure that this that's what this book is. I think this is a book about killer kitty cats. Look at that little kitty cat on the cover. Meow. I mean, look at it. I think the artist tried to make him look frightening, but you know, he just looks like he's going after some string or a sock. Um, <laughs> and, and look at this title page. It's Grumpy Cat. Grumpy Cat's on the title page. More chilling than the birds. Well... A novel of screaming terror. Screaming! It screams terror! Meow. So, okay. I got a book about killer kitty cats. You know I'm going to read it, and I'm going to talk about it here. <laughs> oh, man. How high were you? How high were you, Stephen King? That's okay. I, I really look forward to this. Um, okay. Killer kitty cats. I'm going to give it a try. And I'm going to talk about it with you guys. Lucky you! Uh, the next book uh, I'm going to read is actually uh, kind of a, is, is a fantasy horror. It even says on the back, fantasy horror. So it's a fantasy horror. It's called Chasing Graves, number one in a trilogy, apparently. I never heard about this book at all. Uh, but uh, Steve talks uh, about books and things and stuff. Steve talks about books and stuff on YouTube. He, uh, he was talking about this book and how he's doing a uh, read-along for his book club in March. And, well, I had to jump on board with that, right? Because Steve's cool and he has good taste. So I'm going to uh, read Chasing Graves. Don't know much about it. It either has something to do with ghosts and zombie, or zombies, I'm not sure which, in uh, a fantasy world that looks like it's based on ancient Egypt. And look at that cover. Man. Okay, so this has got to be cool. So I look forward to Chasing Graves. I'm going to talk about it after I read it. I'm probably going to read it uh, right after I read Feral, which is uh, when I'm going to be done, as soon as I'm done with um, Dead House Gates. So it'll probably be the third book I read in March. And, and then I'll talk to you, all, to you all about that here. Uh, I'm going to link uh, uh, Steve Talks Books and Stuff. Uh, I'm going to link his video in the description box below. So you can see what he has to say. And he has a great channel anyway, and you should check it out. Also going to read Starving Ghosts in Every Thread, which I think is about some sort of uh, woman who has a condition where she has to feed off the emotions of others. Uh, I, I've heard a lot about this book. The first time I've, it's, it's teensy. It's like an 80 page story, basically. So it's not a novel, it's a story. Um, but I look forward to reading it. Uh, John at Books of Blood. Uh, he is the first person that I heard talk about it. John is always getting me to buy books. Uh, darn that, John. But uh, he had some good things to say about this. I've, I've heard other people review it on, uh, on the booktube, and they all have great things to say about it. So I'm looking forward to this one. Uh, next one I'm going to read. Blackwater. Uh, this is by Michael McDowell, who was a great paperback original writer back in the day, back in the 80s. Uh, most people, if they remember him at all, they remember him for doing the screenplay to Beetlejuice uh, and, uh, and uh, a couple other things. Um, but he was a really great uh, paperback original writer. He wrote uh, The Elementals, which is a great horror novel. It's, it's one of those no horror novels that I read, I liked. And then I just ended up thinking about, I'm always thinking about the elementals. It's just one of those books that haunts your brain and, and you just keep thinking about it. It had such a perfect sense of place and such cool characters and odd situation. Elementals was great. And uh, he also did Cold Moon Over Babylon, I think it was called. Don't quote me, but I think that's what it was called and that was good. But this one, Blackwater, was published by Avon Books in six parts. Like there would be this little paperback that would come out and uh, every, what, couple months? I don't, I have no idea. So part one came out, then part two, then part three, and it was all these little horror paperbacks. And I found the first part 
in a used bookstore back in the early 90s and I read it and I thought it was great and then I couldn't find any of the other parts. Uh, and this is back in the days when you couldn't just, you know, pop on the internet, which, you know, wasn't a thing. Uh, so I, I never read the rest of it. And then lo and behold, this big, fat, wonderful hardcover with the wonderful wraparound cover. Look at that. It's beautiful. So this came out so I can finally read the rest of it. Uh, Michael McDowell, great, great atmospheric horror writer. And uh, if, if you've never heard of him, you know, find something. Find the elementals, pick this up. Uh, I'm going to read that, the rest of this, sometime in the next few months. I don't know when my TBR is kind of packed, but I'm going to. And I can't wait because I really want to find out. I've literally waited decades to find out how this story ends. So looking forward to that. And uh, the last thing I have here on my horror TBR, this is a big one. Uh, I love horror anthologies. I've got a ton of horror anthologies because I think horror just works so well in short story form. And I finally got a copy of this. Now, many people consider this the greatest horror anthology. Um, I just hear that over and over. And that would be the Dark... Descent, winner of the World Fantasy Award, and uh, it's edited by David G. Hartwell. Uh, I've been hearing about this for years. Uh, this was released uh, like this and also in three uh, mass market paperbacks. Uh, it was separated into three parts and published that way. Um, I, I had like the first mass market paperback and I read that and I liked it, but now again, uh, just, just, uh, just like Blackwater, I've got the whole thing uh, in in book form, and it's huge. How how big is this? It's a thousand pages long. It's got every great horror writer ever in there. Um, I'm really looking forward to reading this. I'm I might wait till October. This might be my massive October book because this oh, it just looks great. I love horror anthologies. Let me know. Any guys, any of you that know whether there's an anthology that's actually better than this, but from what I hear, this is, this is the one. Uh, so yeah, all those books, and once again, my highest recommendation to Mexican Gothic. I don't think you'll be disappointed in this one. I think this one is great. Oh, that darn alien is barking at somebody. My alien, he's always, he's always yelling at people outside the window. I never know what he says because I haven't been able to translate his language. Anyway, Mexican Gothic. <laughs> Quiet alien! Okay, I'll see you again <laughs> at Stately Vaughn Manor.